Hey, it's Aaron, the Metal Theologian. Uh, Alright, so, um, yeah, I was trying to make a video, and uh, it's funny, I was just getting ready to, um, I don't know, just sort of randomly talk about shit that I've been listening to, but um, I have to hear from Eric Bauer, who's been like on a big fucking 70s kick, so this is like the Eric Bauer impromptu 70s proggy hard and heavy list. And I can't repeat that because I won't remember it. But that's what this is. What I am firing up right now, though, just for informational purposes, is a record that I've had for a while. And honestly, it has a good reputation, but I never got my own head around it. So I'm pulling it out again and even another chance. That's what I'm going to do right now while I'm yapping. It is the first Era Parent record. They made a couple more after this one, one or two more, I think, that uh, had less metal-looking covers than this one, so those didn't exactly draw me in, you know. But this is Graceful Inheritance on Black Dragon. And, um, yeah, and I could talk about it for a minute, but I kind of said what I have to say, and uh, this is going to take forever. Okay, so here's the deal with this list. It's not even really a list, okay? I just went over and pulled out a bunch of shit that I like. But what I tried to focus on is shit that... Oh, fuck, I didn't even get them all. God damn it. What I tried to focus on, though, was records that came to mind quickly because they're ones that I, like, played a lot as opposed to ones that I think are cool and that sort of thing, you know what I'm saying? Because there are a lot of records where I go, oh, this is a fucking great piece, or, you know, I love the idea of this record that I didn't actually play as much. So that's kind of the idea I'm going for here. Yeah, and it's funny because uh, I just went alphabetical and I left the first half of the alphabet over here, so hang on. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I just pulled this one out because I want to play it later myself. That's not on the list. <laughs> Shit, man. Such a fucking chore. Alright. Uh, you know, it's fine. It's very first one breaks my rule, but this is the Alcana record, which is kind of a little more late 70s. I don't know if this would be quite up your alley, but I had to mention this record because I looked for it for a long time, and, it, and before getting this reissue of sort of sketchy provenance, I didn't cough up for an original. But as far as I know, they only made this one record, Welcome to My Paradise, and it's just a great, like, hard rocker. It's, uh, it's not as much the early 70s vibe as sort of heading in the direction of, like, where Van Halen would be in that, but it's not as, like, commercial sounding as Van Halen. I mean, I think Van Halen sucks, so if I let this sound like Van Halen, I wouldn't be saying it's good, but this is a fantastic record, so, um, yeah, and I got it kind of recently compared to most of these, so it means, like, fucking six years ago or something, as opposed to, like, 20 years ago. Okay, this is a fucking great record, okay? Armageddon. Note that Armageddon is spelled wrong. With two G's and one D. When you see it on lists, sometimes they correct it without, like, realizing it, so... You kind of have to look for it, but, um... Anyway, yeah, this is a reissue on Missing Vinyl. This is just a cool fucking, like, 1970-ish German hard rock record. They do, um, they actually do a cover of, uh, Better By You, Better Than Me, and they did that before Judas Priest did it. As far as I know, they didn't get sued either, so, uh, go figure, right? They also do a cover of Rice Pudding, which, uh, put me off. It's like a fucking Jeff Beck song. I was like, ah, but it's awesome, man. Fucking everything about this record is just great, man. Start to finish. It's a fucking heavy rockin' record, and the songs are awesome. And speaking of awesome songs, this one isn't as obscure, but you don't want to snooze on this one. This might be too organ heavy because this actually has no guitar on it. It's just the organ and the drums, okay? But fucking, this record is a hard rocker. Like, what I read about this record, this Attila record, was that Billy Joel had, like, heard the first Led Zeppelin record and it blew his mind. I'll tell you, he makes the organ sound like a fucking Zeppelin esque guitar. It's, uh, it kind of has to be heard to be believed. It blew my mind when I first heard it. Jesus, 30 years ago. So, anyway, yeah, fucking. That's it, man. Attila, Billy Joel, and John Small. All-time classic, man. I fucking love it.
This is another one. For some reason, I tend to forget this one, man. But this record's been reissued a couple times, so it's not really that hard to find. Boulder Dam. It's just some nobody guy. This is a Void Press. I fucking hyped that label a while back. But just some nobody band who made a hard rock record, but it's just really goddamn good, man. The songs are awesome. It's fantastic. This is more like a freak rock record, I think, than a hard rock record, per se, or, or a prog rock record. But Edgar Broughton, man, the first three Edgar Broughton records are all really different from each other, and they're all fucking classic. This one is probably the most, like, straightforward, like, rock. The third one is kind of almost more like singer-songwriter, and the second one is just, I don't know, like, bizarre shit. This one has some really, like, weird moves going on, but it's just a great record, like... From start to finish. And I think of songs like Evil and shit like that, I'm thinking like rock. And by the way, dude, we've got the quality mustache thumb going on here too, so you know. There you go. Um fuck am I turning these around backwards? That's okay. I'll figure it out. Okay, you probably know this band, but don't snooze on Buffalo. Okay, this is maybe the heaviest record I'm going to show here, since I'm not showing the bang and shit like that. Um, this is easily as heavy as the first bang record, Volcanic Rock by Buffalo. The third one is a little more boogie. I actually don't even have it. Uh, the first one is a little bit more like early 70s, like sort of more typical sounding hard rock. They're all great, but this is probably the heaviest one. This is the one I wanted to show. So this is like trash, but this is an original that I left in to pretty cheap. Goddamn, a long time ago, so... You know, it's kind of a fucked up cover, really, but it's a great record. Man. I should change this bag. Look how shitty it is. It's all shitted up. It's probably the one I got it in. It was already shitty at the time. All right, here's another one I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about before. Terrible name on this, okay? And it's Canadian. Charlie with two E's. Look at that. Wouldn't you walk right past this fucking record if you saw that? Look at that. Can you think of a worse band name than Charlie? I'll tell you something, man. You can miss out if you walk by it because this record fucking smokes, man. It's like 75 or 76. And sort of like the Alcana, you can hear it kind of going in that second half of the 70s direction. But it's more firmly rooted in the first half of the 70s than the Alcana is. So it like has the rock, it has the songs, it has the sound, it has a little bit of the sort of you know, moving in a more modern direction, guitar flourishes, but it's a fucking great record from start to finish, man. It's Canadian, too, and it's, I guess it's the main thing for this guy, uh, Walter Rossi, who I don't really know anything about. Kind of don't care. Charlie is awesome, though, man. Here's what I'm pretty sure I've talked about before. La Cofradia de la Flor Solar. How about that name? They're, uh, from, uh, I think Argentina. It might be Peru, but I think it's Argentina. This is, uh, I don't know, one of the unsung gems from South America, man. I don't know, it's just, this is, again, a reissue of sketchy provenance. It's actually found in New York, of all places. Um, I don't know how many of these are out there. Originals are rare, but this is just a fucking awesome record, man. Check it out online, if nothing else. It's fucking rocking. Had some blues moves, a little bit more than some of the other stuff. But uh, I got into this record long before uh, I got into uh, blues rock. And um, it did put me off, so I shouldn't put you off either. Also, this Cubero Diaz guy was kind of a big guy. Actually, he's Argentina, and I forgot he was on this. That, uh, he's kind of a big guy in Argentine. Good rock music, so... All right, here's another German one. This one's more prog and a little more heavily orchestrated, but it still brings the fucking rock, man. This is Cornucopia. That's kind of a weird cover. You know, it's funny. The thing was, like, mirror it flipped, so I can, like, see. And so this side looks like it's uh, forwards, and this side looks backwards. It kind of threw me off for that. But that's just the fucking cover. This was a brain record. Um... Yeah, and, and you know something? I think the Brain label is a little bit overrated, honestly. There are lots of great Brain records, but there's some real crap on Brain, too, and some shit that are just ordinary prog that I don't really give a fuck about. This is not one of those, though, man. This is fucking great. And there are a couple more Brains in here, too, so, uh, yeah. This one 
was actually a Pilz record originally. This is Dies Irae, it's another German one. It's Dies Irae first, and it was their only record, so it's like uh, the German like first album curse. Like for some reason there are all these German bands who thought it was a good idea to call their first record first or number one or something like that. Excalibur comes to mind right off. They made one called The First Album, and it was their only record. You could, if you're a German band and you call your fucking first record first, you're never gonna make another record, dude. You just fucking killed your career, so don't do it. It's dumb. But this is not dumb. This is a really good record. Like Cornucopia, it's a little bit more proggy than heavy. Although this one's probably heavier than Cornucopia and both fucking rock, so don't like get the wrong idea there. Um, yeah, man. Kind of high concept for hard rock, but a fucking fantastic record. Another one, man, this might be even heavier than those two. It's also kind of high concept. This one's sung in German, too, so it might be a little bit weird, but this is Drosselbart. And the record's self-titled, and just fucking look at that cover for a minute, man. What can I tell you that that cover is going to tell you? Yeah. There's something weird about this record that I'm trying to figure out how to articulate. I've love this record for uh, Jesus I had a CD of this back in probably 95 or 96 something like that so I mean a long time I've loved this record and there's always been something weird about this I've never quite been able to put my finger on but um, it's an awesome record man it has lots of it's a really dark record this is probably one of the darkest records I'm going to show again it's just something about how it vibes out man it's a great one, just like fucking hard rock with that early 70s sound you love. This is Flax. These guys are actually Norwegian. And I think this is their only record. Even though it's called One. So, um, yeah, they're not German, but they still suffer from the curse, if I'm not mistaken. If you know that Flax made another record, then you know something I don't. I could be wrong about this one. DSC definitely only made the one, but Flax is awesome. Okay, here's another German one that I played the fuck out of. This other one's kind of proggy, too. It's another brain record, but... Fucking Gamora. I turned to see whose voice it was. Man, there are no words, dude. This record is so fucking good. It's a weird cover, man. It doesn't even look like what it's from. This record's like 72 or something. And I don't know, I've always thought that cover looks like, you know, a weird, like, 80s airbrush cover or something, but, um... Yeah, I don't see a date on here right off, but um, these guys made, depending on how you count, they made either two or three records. They're, they made, um, the first record was called Trauma, and there was an English version and a German version. The German version was kind of first, then they made the English version to kind of get more sort of, a little more like notice. Uh, I actually don't know the German one. The English one is very good. I actually have it sitting over there. It's a fucking great record, but this one is the masterpiece, man. I turned to see whose voice it was. I know how the spelling of Gamora, too. It's kind of not how you usually see it in your authorized version, 1611, King James Bible. Um, this is one, God, I'm pretty sure uh, Corey talked about this one at one time. This is Granicus, if that's how you pronounce it. These guys are from Cleveland, but they're actually American Indians, and there's sort of some Native American like themes in that. But I'll tell you something, man. It doesn't, like, overshadow. You wouldn't even necessarily know because it's just a fucking hard rock record. This is an unusual record because they, there's a lot of lead guitar that gets played over the verse. And I've only heard, like, two or three things in my life that do that. So it's a really unusual sound, but it's fucking heavy and awesome, man. And it's been reissued, too. This is my not-in-real-great-shape original that I got got a long time ago. Okay, here's another German one. Harry Chapter. And the record's called Eyes. Their second record is also very good. Um, Can't Get Through, it's called. This is the harder one. Actually, they made a German record, too, that I used to have. Um, they had a lot of these songs, but they kind of reworked them for this and made them heavier. This is the better record. This one's called, like, Electric Sounds for Dancing or something. It's a weird record, but... We also always loved this, by the way. See the pictures of them on the back? Look at this fucking guy right there. See his head? Just like... Like they cut it out and like pasted it in. This is a fucking heavy record, man.
Yeah, I don't even want to say anything more about it, man. Has a little bit of a bluesy vibe, but only a little bit. Dude, you fucking love this record, man. I'm speaking to Eric now. Just fucking trust me on this one, man. Okay, this one is still 60s. I want to say this is like 68, but don't sneeze on it because fucking Sea Shanties by the High Tide is awesome, man. It's fucking rocking. It kind of has a blue cheerish sort of vibe, man. So if you like Vinci Bus Eruptum, you'll like this one too, man. It's a fucking fantastic record. They made a couple records, and I've heard some other shit that, honestly, I didn't particularly care for, or at least didn't like as much as this. But this record, goddamn, dude. I found this in the wild. I don't even remember when. It was probably a long time ago. But, um, yeah, I about jumped for joy when I came across that fucker, man. Because it's awesome. High Tide Sea Shanties. I think they're British. Could be wrong. Alright, that's the first stack. We're 16 minutes in. Alright, these guys, I think, are Swiss. I Drive. Lousy name, isn't it? I Drive. Heavy record, man. Fucking really fucking good. Yeah, this is a reissue on Second Battle. It's like a double because they fucking gave me a bunch of bonus tracks that I don't want, so... What can you do? There's even a bonus 45 in there, but the record, man... Fucking great. Here's another heavy one, man. Incredible Hog. This one had at least three different covers that I know of, so... They only made one record. Look for, uh, I think it's called Volume 1, in theory, and I think they're British, too. But, like, there's a Spanish cover, and a German cover, and an English cover, and they were all different, and whatever. So, they're all weird, too, actually. Well, the Spanish one isn't that weird, but this one is. Fucking look at that. Incredible Hog, man. It's heavy. There was actually a reissue on, um... I'm forgetting. I don't think it was Rise Above. It doesn't wasn't We Bite, but it was one of those labels where you wouldn't expect to see it. But they do because they mostly do newer bands, but they do a lot of Doom type of shit. And they gave it a really different kind of cover, but I'm pretty sure it's the same record. So, uh, yeah. Incredible Hog, dude. Fucking two thumbs up on those guys. And two thumbs up also on Jerusalem. This record actually came from South Africa. I think I got a deal on it because people were afraid to get a record from South Africa. But hey, man, that's how I roll it's also 20 years since I got it, but, um, anyway, yeah, the, uh, I was gonna say the first, I think it's their only record, it's produced by Ian Gillen, he didn't do a particularly good job, if you're gonna listen to one thing off this, it's probably be Primitive Man, that's kind of the song that I think makes these guys' reputation, it's a great hard rock record anyway. Neil Merriweather, Kryptonite, awesome, fucking rockin', kinda has a glam vibe to it a little bit. But not, I mean, and fucking look at them. I mean, they're speaking of glam vibe, right? But it's not like, um, the record before this one, Space Rangers, I think is like one of the underrated glam rock records of the 70s. This one is not glam like that. This one is fucking hard rock with a little bit of glam in there, too. The other one is like just beautiful 70s glam, like, you know, what you want out of like, a David Bowie record from the era or something like that. So no shit, quality shit. But this one is the hard rock that dude. Fucking kryptonite. Yeah. Neil Merriweather and the Space Rangers. This is another one that's kind of more prog, but this is another fucking favorite record by a favorite band. Uh, Message from Books and Dreams. But you can tell it wasn't a native English speaker that came up with that, right? First of all, you need it for the cover, right? But this is an awesome record, man. The songs are good. It's over before you know it, this record. That's one thing about it is it feels shorter than it is to me because it's just so good. Again, it's heavy on the prog, this record, but it, like, it rocks. It's, you know, it's, it has a lot of those prog vibes to it, but it doesn't go so far off into La La Land that you just sort of lose interest, you know? Not that I can't hang with that shit sometimes, too, because I can, but... Alright, this one, I was really just curious about because it looked so obscure, but this one turned out to be a fucking cool, like, hard rock record, man. It's The Only Truth by Morley Gray. This is an Akarma reissue, but um, look at that, it's actually a Jesus record, too, I think. It's not, like, really heavy-handed with Jesus, but, I mean, look at that, that's Jesus shit going on there, you see that? The Only Truth. Don't let that fucking scare you off, though, man, because this is an awesome record. 
Yeah. Just fucking, I mean, I keep saying good songs, you know what I mean? But that's one of the main criteria, right? I mean, that's what fucking music is, unless you're listening to something weird and experimental, but... Oh shit, Coltrane, we're probably going to go out to eat tonight. Can you, like, quit while you're ahead? This is going to be in the video, too. Just be judicious, okay? This is almost cheap, okay? Because, uh... This record sounds a lot like Deep Purple, and I love Deep Purple, so... Of course I'm going to love this. This is Murasaki. Uh, this is 1975, this record. They actually made a few records. I have this one in the 12-inch. I haven't come across any others, but, uh, it's a Japanese group. And, uh, again, it has a really heavy, like, Deep Purple vibe, and that's about the best thing I can say as far as, first of all, as far as whether I'll like it, but also as far as, uh, you know, what I look for in a fucking 70s hard rock record. So, that's a good one. This is another one. This is probably the closest thing to that Drussel bark that I have as far as how it sounds. And, you know, the fact they're both sung in German might kind of be a part of it. But this is Tips zum Selbstmord by uh, Necronomicon. And this record is great, dude. It's fucking heavy and uh, lugubrious and dark and proggy for sure. And um, definitely very 70s as far as sort of the drama of it, you know, like in the vocals especially and shit, but like the overall presentation too, but just great. This is actually one of the very first records that I got that was a German one that wasn't, uh, you know, one of the Julian Cope, like Krautrock ones, you know, like Can, Faust, Noi, Ashra Temple, that kind of shit. So uh, this was really kind of a doorway. I remember I got, I went to Aquarius Records in San Francisco actually, I got this and one of the Soul Caravan records on CD, and they both kind of tripped me out and got me started on that path. That was like a long time ago. This record might be a little too prog for Mr. Bauer. It is. Um, it has like some saxophones and flutes and shit like that on. I think it might be too much, but it's such a good cover. I had to show it anyway. This is Nosferatu. German band. This record took me a few listens to get into, in fact. I'll be honest. When I first heard it, I bought it on the strength of that cover. When I first heard it, I was actually kind of disappointed because I wanted more of a rock record. It was kind of more of like a full-on prog record. But it grew on me after, I want to say with time, but not like with a ton of listens, with like maybe four listens. And I've really come to love this record, so. Let me flip this fucking thing. Ooh. Yeah, it's funny. I'm kind of trying to rush through, but I'm at 23 minutes, and I'm just over half done, so... This is going to be a fucking epic regardless. I might as well just own it. Side 2 of Air Apparent. This isn't bad, by the way. It's not like ripping my face off, but I'm liking it more, I think, than I've probably ever had before. In the past, I found it really boring, and I'm kind of enjoying it now, so... All right, back to Argentina for El Relo. And this one I'm not aware of a reissue of, which is kind of why I have this like chewed up original here, but um, this is a fucking awesome hard rock record with a really dark vibe to it too. Although, you know, an Argentine dark vibe isn't the same as German dark vibe, you know? So uh, it's definitely its own thing, but... Uh, one thing that's funny about um, these South American records is that, like, by the songs, they'll have, like, the style. So, like, this one's rock, this one's blues, but this one's opera rock. It's not really opera rock, if that's, like, gonna put you off. It's just more like, it's, like, epic, you know what I mean? It's actually fantastic rock, is what it is. El Viejo Serafin. I don't know. Anyway, awesome record. And here's another Spanish one, although this one is Mexican. Uh, this is El Ritual. It's actually on RAF on the Serie Hard Rock, or Hot Rock, and there's a lot of great shit there. You see that, grab it, but you won't see it. Um, 
This, I think, is the only record I own that has a drum solo in the first song. It's the only rock record. The jazz section might be another story, but yeah. The first song, called Satanas. Fucking, how can you pass on that, man? What else do you want to know? Yeah, Satanas, Mujer Facil Prostituta, Conspiracion. I don't know much Spanish, dude, but fucking, I'm sold anyway. Also, it's a really cool hard rock record. This one's not super proggy, this one's more like rock. Look at that fucking weird logo, too, man. Anyway, great band. Okay, this is an Italian one. I actually have this fucking thing in here because this cover is so bizarre, I don't have to fuck up my other records. This is, uh, Io Come Io by Il Rovestio della Medaglia. So these guys are Italian, and being Italian, they kind of have that, they approach their hard rock like it's Verdi or, you know, something like that. Like really fucking intense and operatic as far as like overly dramatic and super like over the top. And a lot of the Italian, I love Italian prog, okay? A lot of the shit though is more like prog than hard rock. These guys walk that line. I have this record and uh, La Fibia, which is the first one. And they're both fantastic. I think this one might edge out the other one, but on another day, I might change my mind. I, I, you, I might uh, take the other side of it. This one does have this weird medallion, though. If you see that thing? You can actually pull that off, but uh, I don't want to do that because uh, I probably won't find another one of these. All right, great record. Il Rovescio della Medaglia. Let me put the shit back together so I don't fuck it up later on. Alright. This is a Japanese one. This is Speed Glue and Shinky. What a name, right? And um, this is actually, this is a double. It's the second record. Eve, I have a reissue of too. That's the first one. It's great too. This one, I'm pretty sure originally came out in this weird packaging. This is an older reissue. Because the original's like fucking thousand dollars or something. Um, but it has this like wraparound thing and then like two like individual covers. So I'm just going to show off because it's awesome. There's this one and then there's this one. So. This fucking ripped my face off. It's a little blues heavy. It took me a little bit to get past that at that point because it's more blues than a lot of the stuff that I did, but it's heavy as fuck, first of all. And, um, it's just great, man. It has that sort of Japanese, like, weirdo vibe to it, too. There's actually less Japanese shit in the stack than I expected there to be because some of the stuff I thought would be more prog, like, Cosmos Factory is a band I like to hype, but that might be a little bit more sort of prog than like hard. Flower Traveling Band, I'm, of course you know. Blues Creation is kind of heavy on the blues, and I didn't want to like just have like a bunch of like Japanese blues shit. And a lot of the Japanese shit is just so weird, it's not as much like rock, like the uh. Oh, Jesus. Like Taj Mahal Travelers, you know, or I have a Masahiko Sato there, the record over there. And, I mean, he made some legit jazz records, too, but... Yeah, okay, anyway, Speed Glue and Shinky is fucking awesome. This is one I haven't seen a lot of talk about either, and this one isn't even all that heavy, but I just like it a lot, man. I've always loved this record. This is the first record by the Spirit of John Morgan. Um... Yeah, it's actually a very early Wawa reissue. And this is just a really good, like, solid rock record. Yeah, I don't know. Um, has the organ... I, it's, it's a hard record for me to talk about because I just really like it. and can't really even explain why as much as some of these. But, um, yeah. It's awesome. The Spirit of John Morgan. All right, here's another one, man. These guys, I want to say, were from England. This record had it came out with a couple different covers, uh, but as far as I know, they only made the one record, which is Green Eyed God by The Steel Mill. Notice that Iron Maiden font there for uh, Iron Maiden music. This record's like 
no later than 74. Um, this one did take me a couple listens to get into. The songs aren't as, don't, aren't grab you as immediately as well as Spirit of John Morgan, but you know, some of these other ones too, but, um, it's worth a couple listens because it pays that shit back. Um, Tarkas, these guys are from Peru. Yeah, uh, named it for an Emerson, Lake and Palmer record. This is fucking one of the heaviest 70s things you'll hear. This is just a fucking tremendous record, man. I look at that mustache, by the way. We got a couple good ones, but this one's particularly high quality. So, um, yeah. This is just a great, like, this is what you're looking for, okay? Tarkas. You like fucking Bang? You're gonna like this Tarkas record. I think this is the only record they made, too. Oh, come on. Fucking beef in this shit. Like a dum dum. Um, alright. Here's another one that's great. Not quite as obscure, maybe, but this is Three Man Army. Third of a Lifetime. They made three records, actually, that I'm aware of. They're all really good. Um,. This is the first one. It actually has this kind of cool die cut cover. Only in the American press, interestingly. What the British one has up, I see that shit. Anyway. Fuck yeah, man. Look at that guy. Anyway, this is a really cool hard rock record, man. Three man army indeed. 